The landscape in CML is exciting today because we have many choices of therapy. Uh, I think one of the, uh, the key lessons we've learned is the primary importance of achieving early molecular response, that is uh, being less than 10% by three months of BCR able level. And we know that patients who don't achieve that are predominantly the patients that have bad outcomes with CML, that is uh, kinase domain mutations, progression to blast crisis, or, um, or refractory disease. And, and really, uh, it really focuses our attention in, in that first three months on trying to achieve early molecular response. The primary determinants of EMR are the potency of the TKI drug that's used and the intrinsic biology of the disease. So if you take a patient uh, receiving a matinib, uh, then all of the trials would suggest that their chances of EMR failure are somewhere between 30 and 40 percent. If you use a more potent drug, such as uh, desatinib, it gets down to around 15 percent, and more potent again with nilotinib, down to about 10 percent. So clearly there's a, a direct link between the potency of the drug and the capacity to reduce EMR failure to an absolute minimum. But the other critically important factor there is the uh, biology of the disease because patients who have a high SOCAL score have a very high probability of EMR failure with imatinib, over 50%, which comes down dramatically with a more potent drug, down to less than 20%. So that's where the, the value can be um, had with the more potent drugs. Patients particularly with a high SOCAL score, a very high risk of EMR failure with imatinib, this can be um, greatly improved by using a more potent drug. Increasingly today, our focus is treatment-free remission, uh, and for that as well, achieving um, EMR is critically important. We've shown in many studies that patients who don't achieve EMR have a very low probability um, subsequently of achieving a deep molecular response, which is the platform for treatment-free remission.